welcome to the October uh, Knock and Waterfront Neighborhood Council agenda. Um, so we all know the meeting is uh, being uh, taken by uh, Matt Monkey at knockandwaterfront.com, just so you know it's uh, my left, your right. Um, I'm going to do a, a roll call starting with Jonathan. John Sparato. George Mendoza. Tony Sparato. Ask John Bergman. Bill Wayne. Um, meeting call from the Vice President. The meeting will be conducted according to parliamentary rules. The President will have the final word on the conduct of the meeting and will cast a vote only in the event the rest of the Council reaches a tie. The President will recognize the Speaker to make their presentation and statement, and then he will permit the Council to ask questions. We will then open the floor to questions from the audience, and each audience member should introduce themselves by name and street address. No person will speak. Until they have been recognized by the president. Um, I don't see Nicole. Is Nicole here? No. So we don't have a neighborhood services report, but um, Marie, do you have anything to say on behalf of the representative? No, 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 no. I um, have one report from the city council's office, and that is that on October 25th, it's a Thursday at 6 p.m. in the Sayanella Chamber. Um, we are having a, a, a hearing on the nuisance control ordinance that was um, filed in August. So if you're interested, um, we scheduled it later in the evening so people can participate, they can come after work. Uh, it's at 6 p.m. on October 25th. And um, it's regarding the nuisance control ordinance that Council La Matina filed in August. And if you have any questions, you can call uh, the office. You can ask for me at 617-655-3200. On October 25th, 6 p.m. You can come, you can testify, there'll be a signing sheet, they'll, they'll let the um, people in the audience you know, testify on behalf and support or an objection to the uh, ordinance. So, again, that's the 25th at 6 p.m. Um, Ryan Kenny is not here, so we're going to skip the, uh, the uh, parking and traffic uh, parking and traffic uh, committee report. Um, I will say this, that the city is in the process of um, exempting resident, residential uh, um, resident pockets. So if you have a resident sticker or not the residential sticker for your vehicle, you will be exempt from the two-hour parking limit. Um, we're in the process of, um, of changing some of the signage. Um, I'm not sure what street yet they were supposed to do in September. They haven't done it yet, but they're in the process of figuring out which streets they will they will um, <laughs> what it means is that if you have a resident sticker, you will not get the two hour, the two hour limit does not apply to you, so you can park for longer than two hours. Um, we're also going to skip the public safety report. I apologize. Um, Dave Mox is um, out of town, has been out of town, and um, I've known for the council was able to attend the meeting. But you can check it out on Matt's website, northernwaterfront.com. He filmed the meeting last Thursday. Um, and last is the Greenway Committee, um, which um, gives us a report. We also have Nancy Brennan here to, uh, to speak from the Greenway as well. If you want to say a few words. Sure, I'll just say a couple things and I'll turn it over to Nancy. Jody Wallen is all, is all <coughs> with us again here this month. Thanks, Jody. She's a develop, the development director at Greenway. Just a couple of notes. Um, on the 29th National Public Land Day, 50 volunteers plus the Conservancy staff Worked on six different projects in the north in the uh, in the Greenway. They um, cleaned up parcel five, did some rose pruning on parcel eight, uh, a lot of weeding, including parcel ten. Did some work on the stone dust paths in parcel eight and ten here in the north end. So, and they worked uh, with Leslie University students to help beautify our park. So they did a great job. Also on the seventh of October last uh, this weekend, um, there was uh, about thirty thousand people attended the Boston Local Food Festival. Uh, that was on parcels 14 to 18. There was about 120 vendors and nonprofits. In that. Very impressive. 30,000 people came to our park, um, our Greenway Park. So uh, we're very pleased with that. The, the Greenway's been beautiful all summer and it continues to be beautiful into the fall. So with that, I'll turn over to the Greenway Conservancy President, Executive Director. Oh, no. <coughs> Director. Director Nancy Brennan. Hello, everyone. I'm Nancy Brennan from the Greenway Conservancy. Thank you, and I'll be very brief. Uh, uh, thank you, Bill, very much. About Public Land Day, I also want to uh, recognize 
the seven volunteers from the Friends of the North End Parks who also helped uh, to beautify this portion of the Greenway. Thank them very much, as well as other Greenway volunteers. The real reason I'm here is just to answer any questions and to clarify any information about uh, serving on the Greenway Board. The Greenway Board is a private nonprofit board, and there has been discussion and debate about what it really means to serve on the board, and I just thought I would uh, talk about it a little bit to the association because I know you are uh, in, on the threshold of making a nominee, which is fantastic, and we're really looking forward to working with whoever that nominee is. So uh, the first thing to say is the normal job description of a nonprofit board member in Massachusetts, it has some legal requirements to it. And they are ones that I think you'll recognize from other boards that you may already serve on. There are things, it's a three-page position description, if you will, and I think uh, Stephen has copies of it. And Jody, if you wouldn't mind, uh, would you bring these up front for me? Thank you. They are things like, uh, because it is a legisl legislatively mandated position, and it talks about what the role of a board member is. Uh, and it says, the conservancy shall be governed by the board of directors, which will be dedicated to ensuring that the Greenway is operated, maintained, managed, and actively programmed, financed, and improved to the highest standards to create an important resource of national, regional, and statewide significance for residents and visitors to the city and the neighborhoods and districts in which the Greenway is situated. So that is a bit of the background and the responsibility of a board member is to be fully knowledgeable about the Greenway's mission, to assist the board and the staff in addressing issues that exist in the community, and that's a very important role that um, they, all board members play. The, uh, the kind of Nuts and bolts are that we expect board members will attend 75% of, of the annual schedule of board meetings. That can be done telephonically, particularly if someone is out of town. That's not a problem. Uh, there are uh, new regulations, as you might imagine, from the latest passage of legislation, and that is that all board members are trained in open meeting law procedures, and that training uh, will happen for you uh, when the, the board member is designated. And uh, again, coming back to the importance of the association and all the neighborhood groups, we really hope that uh, the board member will be an ambassador from the neighborhood to the conservancy, from the conservancy back into the neighborhood. Some other highlights one that has been talked about a lot is the financial role of a board member. So, we have 15 board members now, and these are the same expectations that have been in place for years, and this, and I'm really going to be straightforward about how it works. There is the following language, make an annual individual financial contribution, give or get, as appropriate to your circumstances. We have board members that have served with distinction for years, that whose personal circumstances don't rise comfortably to the level of $5,000, give or get. They are very respected members of the board. We respect all our members of the board. At the same time, at both end, the conservancy relies on its board members to be some of the most passionate people about the mission of the Conservancy. And we hope they will understand that the keeping the, the finances in good, solid position, broadening the base of support to have as many people who love the Greenway be part of supporting the Conservancy, we hope uh, and we believe that uh, that is part of the role of a board member. 
it is not pay to play. I know it's easy to misunderstand, but that is not our philosophy and honestly has never been our philosophy. We would like to explain that. And for those people who are not entirely sure whether they are comfortable with fundraising, Jody is one of the best educators about that it actually can be fun to raise money uh, for any nonprofit that you believe in. Uh, if it's $25, $100, uh, that all goes to the good and the public good that the Conservancy tries to do for the Greenway, and we thank, we thank that, them very much for that. Uh, the other thing I'll just say is shortly we'll hear the Friends present some ideas for the improvement of the North End Parks. Uh, I'm happy to say that our staff have met with the Friends five times since July 9th. And we will be meeting with them again tomorrow night. And we look for, the Conservancy looks forward to have a collaborative plan to bring to the whole community to make this good park an even better park. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I answer any questions? Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Friends? Uh, Nancy, you stated that the regulations are based on the new law. Uh, who promulgated the regulations? I'm sorry, which regulations are you referring you, to? You stated that there are regulations based on the new law. There is now an open meeting law regulation, and there are very uh, straightforward rules on how a board meeting is conducted. Those are the regulations I'm talking okay, about. So the law is respect with respect to the open meeting yes. requirements. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Just a long follow up, one, please. Just so people can you just state your name and your address just so we can look. Dave Kubiak, I know. Cleveland Place. Great. You're looking for a board member? Yes. Oh. Uh, not nominated by the association. You get nominated by one of the neighborhood groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you go about it? I'll talk. I, Oh, yeah. I just had a, um, like a recommendation about this open meeting on training, if that could be also open, possibly, because I, I, you know, we participate in a lot of open meetings but might not have had the training, or <clears throat> just as a, a way for us to be educated, even if we're not part of the board, but just to understand what that means. That's a that's really something. interesting idea. There, there's a lot of, that's, <clears throat> there's a lot of merit in that. Yeah. The, uh, the Attorney General will participate in uh, the training of our board, and but that is an idea that I will take to uh, our board. Maybe we can have a kind of second round. Even if it's separate from that, I think just yeah. offering that. You know, something just, I want to yeah. participate. For, for other boards that are helping the CEO, like the Neighborhood Council or uh, Nuro or whatever it may be. I will say that our experience with the Attorney General's office is that they are really anxious to work with any group, whether it's a 501c3 or a neighborhood council, to, to help that training along. They also have a good website where there is a PowerPoint that is in a, a kind of a, a tutorial for any group that is wants to look into it and know how to do it better. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, just one, one more uh, quick announcement from, um, from George Mendoza has an announcement. Uh, Monica's Restaurant has been holding an early fundraiser for our local public school, the Elliott School. And we've been playing a pretty important role in helping them uh, collect funds for their uh, uh, supplies and that sort of thing. We've raised $20,000 a year. Uh, last year we raised a little bit less, uh, but uh, we are holding our fundraiser this year on uh, November 13th, which is a Tuesday, it's starting at 6 p.m. Uh, we sell 100 tickets. Every proceed from that event uh, goes to the Elliott School. Tickets are $200 per person. Monica donates the food and the service, the uh, wine, and we work with our local uh, uh, suppliers uh, for some of the uh, produce and meats and, and wines that are used at that location. Uh, it's a great event. Uh, we usually uh, sell out every year. Uh, last year we had uh, the mayor, uh, one of the mayor's aides come over, and the mayor himself donated a, uh, 
a uh, check uh, from his personal account to the events. We had, uh, Aaron was there also. We had a lot of support from the community and from our representatives. Uh, we'd love you all to come, uh, anybody who can. We're also this year for the first time going to be taking contributions in addition uh, to uh, being able to come over for the dinner. Right? If you, the dinner is out of your budget or you'd like to make a smaller contribution, you're going to be out of town, that's also going to be possible. Uh, we're going to have it on our Facebook page, we're going to have it on the website for the restaurant. It should be on this week. We hope to have it on the local paper. Uh, again, it's Tuesday, November 13th. It's $200 per person. Every penny that we collect goes to the school. Uh, and you'll get to meet, uh, if, you, if you come, you get to meet a lot of the other parents in the community, uh, the principals, some of the, uh, the, uh, the teachers are going to be there also, and hopefully some of the local politicians so we can uh, bargain for other things on that event. All right, so again, November 13th, 6 p.m., $200 per person. It's been very successful. We're going to continue to do it and uh, continue to help the school. And the school is bigger now, so they need more help. All right. Can you email the flyer to me? Sure. Thank you. Uh, great event, great school. Um, we'll start with the um, first item on the agenda, which is um, the Friends of the Northern Parks. They're here, I believe, tonight. They have Nate Swain here, Diane Daly, and some other members of the group here as well. But it looks like they're um, behind the PowerPoint presentation. Um, we're just going to introduce them. And, um, basically, introduce the group to the neighborhood, well, to the neighborhood council, and they're going to go over some of their um, plans for the water culture on, on Greenway parcels uh, 8 and 10. So if you want to shut those lights, that would be, um, I just want to know what I just made it up. Hello, I'm Lane Swain. I'm the president of the Friends of the North End Parks. I've lived in the neighborhood for 12 years. I live on 81 Salem Street. Um, I was part of the planning process of the original parks. I went to all the meetings. For the the planning of parks, and it was such a um, privilege to be part of that, and to see the highway come down, and to have the vision of the Greenway and, and the beautiful transformation the city had, um, you know, back in 2007. Um, and now we have these parks, uh, and the friends of the North End Parks want to elevate the status of the parks even higher because the the level of plantings we have there at the moment are on the level of highway plantings. Because the, um, the Mass Highway Department um, was in charge of the budget and all the, um, the things that were planted on there. And, and the Greenway Conservancy took over that, that, those parcels with that plan. And now we want to raise it to world class gardens with, with flowers, perennials, um, all sorts of daffodils in the spring. And, uh, these, these things that um, that you see in other parks, but uh, but the, there there are flowers on parcels eight and ten, but they come and go, and they're, they're, um, the original design it, it looked good on paper, but in, in reality um, it's it's not as great as it could be. So um, so we want to really bring it up a notch or a bunch of notches actually, uh, and we have a whole plan to do that. Um, and we've been working on it since July. Uh, we've worked with uh, world-renowned horticulturalist um, Adrian Bloom, who's done great gardens around the world. Um, the design that we're going for is an Adrian Bloom design with, with these sweeps of color and texture and flowers that, um, that bloom all year long. Uh, so there'll be color and texture and vibrancy, even in the winter, in the fall, and early spring. Uh, if you go out there now, it's more or less green. There's, um, there's a, maybe some blues in there. But there's the potential to have rich color all year long. Uh, and we want to bring that to these gardens. Um, and uh, Diane will let you know exactly how we're going to do that. Hi, my name is Diane Valley, and um, I used to own Harbor Greenery down on the waterfront. And every day I used to walk underneath the expressway. And I committed to um, work with anybody who would make that expressway into something beautiful. And I was the chair of the Greenway Gardens, which were parcel 19, 21, and 22, which we did with 300 volunteers. 
And in the process of it, I got involved with Adrian Bloom. And for any of you who are in the horticultural world, you'd know that Adrian Bloom is like Tom Brady is in football. <laughs> he is a world-renowned horticulturist, and he has worked with us to create a plan that would enhance the, the North End um, parks. And he has written a lot of books on it. He came here in July, and he walked the parcels with us. And uh, the Conservancy respects his work, and most other people do too. So we're engaged to do something very beautiful. We also work with the Perennial Plan Association. When we did the um, other parcels, we worked with these people that are the top growers in the United States, and we asked them to extend to us some of their plants that they thought were the tried and true. And if you walk up to those other parcels, you'll see that it's a remarkable different kind of garden that we have in the North End. And this is what we're trying to accomplish. This is Four Seasons Color, and we would like to have that richness of uh, horticulture. In um, the Greenway now, we have nice trees and we have beautiful green lawn, but what's really um, sort of lacking is the finishing touches, which is the perennial and the annual beds, to really enrich those garden spaces. And I think you can tell when you have a world-class garden is that you see brides that will go out and have their picture taken, or little children that will have their pictures taken. And you can see that over at the Boston Public Garden all the time. And we'd like this level of horticulture <coughs> here in the North End. We did a garden with Adrian Bloom at the Mass Horticultural Society out at Elm Bank. It was a um, tennis court. And within one day, that garden was transformed. So if you ever get yourself out to Wellesley, it's not that far, you can see this Bressingham garden that is the same kind of design. We have volunteers. We've reached out to the community here. The Friends of the Christopher Columbus Park has plenty of people that are really anxious to always garden. We've reached out to the Garden Club Federation of Massachusetts. They have 12,700 members and they have written us a letter saying they would like to work with us. Master gardeners are gardeners that go through a curriculum of study and they are required to have 40 hours of community service and they're very interested in participating. They helped us at the other parcels and um, it was a very good opportunity because some people don't want to travel to the suburbs to do their community work and it was a great opportunity. We have a number of horticulturists, plus we have residents and workers in the North End. Mm -hmm. And we developed what we called green teams. We would go to different businesses, like for instance, um, Candace McCool owns the Remax right across from the North End Parks. She's willing to give us teams of seven people to come out and plant. So when we get the daffodils, she'll come out with us and help us plant a whole daffodil bed. And we found that these green teams created a wonderful opportunity to have people have a sense of ownership. And they really felt like they were engaged in this important horticultural project. So we presented this timeline. We're in October. We have a plan that I'll pass around that has been presented to the Conservancy. And um, the front cover of the plan shows all the beautiful different um, perennials that we'd like to include. We're at the point now that we have a one month window of opportunity to make this happen because we can get the daffodils and we can get them in the ground and by next spring you will see a difference. And we also have one of New England's top growers who has agreed to grow 2,000 plants for the North End Parks. And we'll need to raise some money for it. He doesn't want to be the sole underwriter of it, but he's a generous and um, great person that wants to sponsor this. And we can grow these plants just so that we can put them in the North End Parks and save a considerable amount of money. Most of these plants cost $9 or more a piece, and we can get them in for a lot less. So if we can get the Conservancy to agree that this is a plan that's worth doing, that we've been working on since July, we can deliver to you next spring with the help of the Conservancy a beautiful garden that you will be able to go out and have pictures taken. So the next steps that we need is to have an agreement signed with the Conservancy. 
we're reaching out to the community and asking you to reach back to your legislator and uh, any of your elected officials and say yes, in fact, you do want this level of horticulture. Um, we have the ability to get the daffodils, the top daffodil grower in the country is supposed to come next week and we want to work with him to get the daffodils again. We planted 10,000 daffodils on parcel 19 and 20, um, 21. And we'd like to work with the Conservancy to uh, collaborate for the tools and the trash bags uh, to remove some of the plants, the boxwood tree, boxwood plants that are in there are damaged, diseased, or unsightly, and the Conservancy agrees that they have failed, and we have a plan that we can increase um, the quality of the horticulture. So we have some sign-up sheets here and some um, brochures. We hope that you'll come and join us. It's a really fun way to go. And I don't know if any of you saw in the Boston Globe this week, um, Carol Stalker has a cover story in the G Magazine that says, Digging in the Dirt, Fall Planting Spring Color. And that's what we're trying to promote here, that if we get in the fall now, we will be able to deliver spring color <coughs> for you next year. So we hope that you like this idea, and we hope that you'll come out and help with us, and we hope that you'll enjoy beautiful new gardens in the North End. And if any of you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Sure, can someone put those lights on, please? Thank you. So what we do is, if you know the meeting, we, the council will ask questions first, and then we let the uh, people in the audience ask, and if you can state your name and address, that would be great. So um, does anyone on the council have any questions? Or? I do, actually. When you're talking about the parcels that you guys have collaborated with, are those the parcels that are between here and Chinatown, the parcels closer to, uh, which parcels are they accepted? When you say numbers, a lot of people know what the... Um, I work on parcels 19, 21, and 22. It goes from the Moakley Bridge by Interna International Place, and that one that's right in front of the Intercontinental Hotel. The next one is in front of um, what used to be called Russia War, and then the next one, which is at Dewey Square, right by the Bent Building by South Station. So we did six acres. Those parcels were originally designated to the Mass Horticultural Society. And now we're looking to enhance the quality of the horticulture here on 8 and 10, which are right at the end of Hanover Street. Those are the parcels of the Yes, yes. Yeah. Also, a question. I've I, I actually enjoyed the, those parcels very much. Uh, the plantings. We're not just talking about uh, plantings for spring. You do have things that uh, <coughs> beautify during the other, the, other, the other season. So there's a lot of grasses, there's a lot of different plants. And so it, you will do it in phases. So eventually, in a period of the year, you will probably have uh, plantings for every season, no? Right. Our goal is to have four seasons color and four seasons interest. Mm -hmm. um, whenever anybody gardens, they'll let you know that that's work. But those of us who love gardening love that kind of work. Mm -hmm. that is for some people therapy and there are a lot of people here in the north end that have expressed to us that they would like to participate some people remember growing up with a garden and they don't have a chance to do that now and some people moved here from the suburbs and they really miss that opportunity so just like the christopher columbus park has been able to gather in a bunch of people to work together and make something more beautiful that's our intention the other question that I have for you, uh, when you're talking about the plantings, the plantings will be on the areas that already have flower beds. So you wouldn't be doing anything to the, uh, to the lawn area. You would be keeping the, the integrity of the structure of the park, which is be beautifying the beds that are there already. As you said, some of the plants are not in, right. in very good shape. It, the, the parcels are rectangular shape. There's a long strip along the surface artery side that has the stone pathway. And on each side, there's a boxwood hedge. And inside of it are plantings of perennials. But they haven't really succeeded. And we would like to remove those boxwoods and take some of the evergreens from the side beds, which are kind of just jammed green beds, put them over there for winter interest, put some lights on them for the winter, and then in those pockets, put daffodils, put daffodils in where the boxwoods were, 
And then over the winter, we will grow these 2,000 plants for you and put those in. And by then, by next spring, you should have a good basis. Then we'll evaluate what looks good, what doesn't look good, and we'll do the next level of the autumn planting. But that's how gardening goes. It's alive, growing, constantly static. Um, people enjoy that, that it's always different. I mean, that's why we don't pay, we garden. May I make a suggestion to, uh, for you too? There's a big, uh, going back to the local public school, there's a lot of uh, local residents here, parents and children, who might be a good idea to maybe offer that to Tracy at the school. And it would actually get kids outside doing something that kids don't do anymore and bring results to see over time. That might be a good idea. Well, Laurie has already agreed to come out with a group and we'll go to the Elliott School. We'll go to all the community places and try to put together green teams. And some of us, like I did a whole teaching segment called Citizens Gardening. And part of it is the experience and part of it is education. And the Conservancy has a staff of educators also. So hopefully we can enrich the whole experience. So I have a question for right here at North End Park, like the Gassy, I think there's parts here, like Golden Park, and you need to really, you know, improve those parts. I'm wondering, is that part of your scope as well in terms of... Well, the, this came around okay. through a couple of different ways. I mean, I've always been interested in the Greenway since I first got involved. But then when the Perennial Plant Association came this summer in July for their annual meeting, it was a unique opportunity to engage them because I did a six-hour walk with these horticulturists. And we wanted to engage them and say, if you could us, what would it look like? And the reason why we would focus there first is A, it's a very prominent place and it could use some help. And B, it has sun. Like, a lot of us would love to help you out on the product. But you need to prune the trees, do some masonry work on the brick, and then maybe do some planters. But it's not a huge horticultural place. And we hope that if we do something beautiful here, it will be very contagious. And we will get a group of people that will commit to different areas. And they will start taking care of the green space in a more um, direct way. So do you have like a mission in the 501c3? I mean, is it We're in that it process. Yeah. That's it? <clears throat> yeah, to beautify the, the green space in the community. And you're in the process of a filing. Yeah, because I would just make a recommendation and start to consider some of the other. And do you want to help? Not only, I'm I'm a big advocate for trying to get better basketball courts out here, <laughs> and I don't know if that's where it's like, um, you know, where you focus on just horticulture or really kind of improving the parks in general. Um, which well, if, if people care for their parks, if you see flowers and plants. It's a subliminal message that says, we care here. And you will find that the quality of the life gets better. When you put in beautiful green space, crime goes down, people get a little calmer, and it's just a nicer place to live. And it's a wonderful way to have an experiment, because it's a very inexpensive uh, approach that we bring to the table here. And you can see, you can see if it works. So just to clarify, you're not just focusing on those parts, but you would focus on more in the long term. That's your well, we'd like to do this first and then build to the next level. And there are some people on our, our committee that are very committed to the Prado. Some people are committed over to um, uh, Richmond Street. I mean, like everybody sort of has their favorite spot that they would like. But we've agreed to work together in this one place in the sun to start. Go it seems like this was the type of project that needed to be created and conceived very closely with Greenway. I, what I'm hearing is that you created the organization and are now hoping to form a partnership. Do I have it right? Uh, no, we have been collaborating since July. We've met five times. And um, when did you start forming the uh, Friends of North End Parks? I think we started in March or April. June, June. Okay. All right. Because I, I, I had the impression as I was listening to you that it was something that was your idea that you hoped to somehow, maybe the word force isn't right, but somehow really press onto the conservancy, hoping that they would adopt it without necessarily a collaborative 
founding process? So, We've met with them a number of times. They've agreed that those parcels have failed. And um, we've worked together pretty closely to come to a plan, which we have submitted. And it's not that complicated. I mean, there's a lot of dead plants in there. It shouldn't be, you know. I'm not so interested in that as much as I am this, this letter of agreement that seems to be a key step in the process. Yes, it is. So where does that process stand? Well, we would like to get an agreement so that we can get the daffodils and so that we can grow the perennials. Because short of having an agreement, we will miss this opportunity, and you won't have anything next spring or next summer. Except the excellent work that the Conservancy has been doing with the resources it has available to it. It's well, not going to be blowing dust, but anyway. Um, where is that, that agreement in terms of its proximity to actually being formed and you guys actually joining into some formal partnership? Well, they haven't. We have a meeting tomorrow night, so we're hoping that you guys will support it and <coughs> encourage them to move forward because we're ready to go. And, um, you know, putting daffodils on the ground and growing perennials is not too complicated, and there's empty spaces in those beds. So, Diane, would people invited if they wanted to come to the Mariners' house tomorrow night? Is, Please. It, is it open to the public? I mean, yes. I know I, I come every morning off the bat. <coughs> if people are interested, they meet every Wednesday at the Mariners' house at 6 30, correct? Yeah, and we'd love to And sometimes come. the Greenway's there, sometimes they're not, but I've been there, the Greenway's been there. I know people from the Greenway will be there tomorrow night, so you can kind of see where they are in the process and what's going on in terms of collaboration. It's going to be a partnership, though, um, very similar to what they do at Christopher Columbus Park. May, may I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. You've mentioned that you guys have worked on other parcels, <coughs> and the relationship was with the conservers also. So you already have a history of working together. Yeah, okay. Okay. So you guys have already worked with them. Not as the friends of uh, uh, the North End, but there's been a relationship already from other in other parcels, and you've seen success in those parcels. Yeah. The success is visual and tangible. You can go out and look at the plant and check them out. Yeah, okay. I invite you to walk down there. It's yeah. really no, nice. it is beautiful. It's, they, they, they done, <coughs> you know, I think they've done a great job here also, and I do agree that sometimes, you know, you, you think that the plant's going to work here, and it doesn't work here, so you have to put different type of plantings. But uh, it is the gateway to an event, if you wish, you know, and it is the way that we all go to work. If, if you're walking into town, if you're going to City Hall, or you're going to Whatever. So it's it's a really nice area. Uh, I use it. My kids use it, and uh, it's it's really uh, nice. I think it will, it will look pretty with the plantings that are on the other side of town. And I do suggest that anybody anybody who takes a walk, you can walk directly from my greenway to the other greenway, and you can see the difference as you walk up. And the gardens are very pretty. It's a different setup. It's not as ours is more square, you know, rectangle, or whatever you want to call it. Theirs have a little bit pathways and stuff like that, but it's very pretty. And it's got uh, you know plant different things throughout the years. Well, Dave Roderick, who's one of our members, said that what he really misses in the North End is that you have brick and you have green, and he misses red and orange and yellow and purple and blue, and that is a way that we can address that. And that's why you need to do it in the sunshine. You can't do it at the product. Mm -hmm. And it'd be a nice thing to have that continuity of the green because if we were in house like this. Somebody's house, somebody else's house, somebody's house is on a budget, somebody will pay their mortgage. You know? So it'd be nice to have like a continuum of it where it rolls down as you walk over. Because it gets to a point where you really say, okay, the green way is over. And it isn't. The North End is coming to get up. So I think it might be good to get to add some possibilities to it. I know Ann had a question, then I want to have some people in the audience ask a question. Go ahead, Ann. Go ahead. The founding members of the uh, Friends of Christopher Thomas Park, how we started, we start with the fundraiser. I, I want to ask you where you're getting your funds. Well, we have Jeff Sirachi has volunteered to do a wine tasting for us, and um, Carla Gomez has offered to have it at Intico Forno. However, Carla has been away, so we're just going to set up a date and we'll invite all of you to come. And we are also going through the neighborhood to get some sponsorship. We'd like to get somebody to sponsor the daffodils and somebody to sponsor growing the 2,000 plants. But we need an agreement to do that, so that's the point we're at. We, we just started with Jelly Up and Marriott. We do one big fundraiser a year, and um, you know, we raise most of the fundraiser to fund it at that time, at the tune about $80,000 a year. So this year is, we're doing a casino, and I'm going to see how that's going to work out. But, um, but that's how we started our friends group. And you're our inspiration. Thank you.
They're very proud of Plaque. Friends of Columbus Plaque. They started yeah. the model last week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have wonderful volunteers. Uh, Maria Chapa from Snow Hill Street. Um, I didn't understand the relationship, if there was any, between your organization and the people that put on this pie. No. That's, that's, <coughs> there is a thing. And I just want to applaud you on what you've done. Those taro plants are beyond the beyond. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. fabulous. And, the, and, and my comment to you is, um, having been fourth generation North End, um, we, a lot of us want to see something happen in what we call the gas scene. Okay. And I, I am a little bit cautioned by you saying, if there's not enough sun, we can't. So if there's not enough sun in the Prado, has anybody looked at our gas heat to see if there's enough sun in the gas heat? Because that is really, as, as we all know, it's a source of uh, problems for the neighborhood. And um, it's space that can be utilized in a lot of different ways other than dog feces. And I'm a dog owner. So well, has anybody looked at the gas? Either? We agree with you, but we are volunteers, and so we have a limited amount of time, and we wanted to be able to address this this fall. Right. And once we get that going, I'm sure that we can start another committee to address some of the other spaces. And hopefully you'll work with us. Thank you. It all depends if you come in my neighborhood, because that is my neighborhood. Okay. I also wanted to say I'm an artist in the neighborhood, and I've been doing artwork, and I just got approval from the Arts Commission a mural on the flight walls, the red brick, red painted brick flight walls um, going up the flights. Um, that, the, the gas scene. The gas scene, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so some of them painted red, if you notice, some of them painted red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, so I, I'm hoping to um, paint the red brick um, to, to match the Snow Hill granite walls, which will be all granite. Oh, cool. And, uh, and then these vines and stuff. Um, so, so that'll happen in the spring. Great. It's May, correct me if I'm wrong. You put the the uh, on the electric building. That's you know, fabulous. That's, that's, May, that's kudos that's to you. Fabulous. So you yeah. Know. Yeah. And did you do the same one as Church? I did. Yes, he did. Fabulous. That's our guy right you. there. Yeah. Phil Bolandell, Return to Field. Can you explain that this project, the conservancy, is one project? It's, it's not card blanche to do other things. Each time you have to go back to the conservancy, right? That's our understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just because he said you have a contract, it sounded like it was always ongoing, but it's, it's project by project. I think our goal is to collaborate. Oh, and it wasn't that negative. It meant that people didn't think you know you had cop lunch to just go down there and do it. Each time you have an idea, you're going to go to the conservancy. Right, it's like the Christopher Columbus Park. They worked with the city of Boston. And, it's a know. partnership with Fox and Friends mm -hmm. of Governors for Members and they'll they'll be Everything's done on an individual basis yeah, is what I'm trying to bring up. Sure. Hi, Norm says the commercial thing. They just ask uh, people from Greenway, are you open to this plan? I mean she's speaking for you, I just <laughs> you're not nodding yes or no. Uh, the, the, we res uh, first of all, we've been talking and I think in a very productive fashion since July. And we wouldn't be continuing these conversations if we didn't share some common goals. Uh, we have a very good park. It could be better. We can. We are horticulturalists, and we um, all are committed towards four seasons of color and the kind of North End specific dazzle uh, in the design that can come through this collaboration. Uh, we saw the early ideas last week, and so we, so we haven't met, and we will meet uh, tomorrow, as I said. One of the things I think what that Bill uh, was suggesting, too, that caught my attention is that this is a plan that will change four, uh, excuse me, there, uh, there are, there's a west side of the park and there's an east side of the park. There are 11 of those beds on the west side of the park, in other words, the city side of the park, which will be changed really dramatically. And uh, there, are, there are about a dozen and a half of us here tonight, and I really think it would be great to take uh, an opportunity in the next two weeks or so, uh, maybe before the end of October, and have a community-wide workshop 
there's so many people in the North End who worked for weeks and months to create this current design. The city's changed around it, the plant materials need uh, a rethink. But the design itself was really the product of lots and lots of meetings that Nancy Caruso and her team led and then talked into the community. And if Diane and Nate are game, I think that we should come back to the community and have a workshop and get everybody's ideas. Your ideas, George, uh, would be really helpful. Somebody approached me right before I came to this meeting and asked me if more skateboard deterrence could become, become part of this plan for the next year. And all those things are really great ideas. And I think we could uh, maybe take that on board as well. Well, we've met with Numa, we've met with Nuna, we reached out to Christopher Columbus Park, we've met with Ruff. And the Conservancy has changed up the plant material over the Carousel building. They have moved a bunch of plants, and they just redid Parcel 19. And we reached out to the community. We think we're well past that. We've been working on this now since July. And we would like to use this opportunity to actually act. If we take another month to have a delay, there's a very high likelihood we won't get this um, project accomplished. So we think that the time is now to act, and we've, done, we've spent all summer reaching out to people. May I ask another question again? What about changing the structure of the park in any fashion? We're just changing what's in the plant beds. So in a sense, as an experiment, the only failure of the experiment will be we'll have to change the plants again, which yes, obviously yes, they, yes, they can't no. change. They, um, what is that? The, the, uh, the boxwood borders were a big part of the work that came from Crosby, Schlesinger, and Small Ridge after working with the community. And, um, and it's, the outreach has been wonderful. It's a very, very positive direction that this is all going to. Having everybody in the same room to exchange ideas in a workshop before we go forward uh, may be the best way to make sure that everybody in the neighborhood knows what's coming and are behind it. So how about if, if, if any, how does it If anyone interested in this group, they meet tomorrow and they meet every Wednesday at 6.30 in the Mariners' house. Um, I'll just speak very quickly, Diane, because um, I have to move on to some um, things on the agenda. But so tomorrow night, if, you, if you're interested, the Greenway and the Friends group will be meeting together collaboratively at the Mariners' house at 6.30. So if you, if you um, are interested, there's an opportunity there to get involved. Um, Tomorrow at 6.30? Yeah, tomorrow at 6.30. So. And then we can invite everybody to the um, wine tasting at Antico Forno and uh, have everybody be involved there. And, you know, this is an iterative process, but we need to get going. And, and if you want to volunteer, you can sign here and yeah. leave your information. What's the date of the fundraiser? We don't know yet. We're just going to we uh, find out from Carla. But, um, you know, we're excited. There's a lot of people in the North End that have been incredibly generous and uh, willing to participate. So we're hopeful that we'll build more support. Can you send those dates and information to both Matt and I so we can yeah, publish them as soon as we have in them. a timely fashion? Yeah. They have your email filled? Yeah. Yeah. They have, I have their email, they have mine, but sometimes we get stuff, it's the day before we can. We can we no, we want like your help. So we're, gonna, we're going to um, move on to the next, thank you, thank thank you. Very, thank much. you very much. We're going to move on because we have a lot of things on the agenda. Mm -hmm.